that bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all Chorus, I must, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, help me, Jesus alone. Verse 3. All to the Savior. My burdens to bear. I must tell. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. He all my cares and sorrows. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me, oh, how my heart is tempted to sin, I must tell Jesus. This is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him.
Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I'm now going to reaffirm our faith by using the use of the Apostles' Creed. I think Miss Margaret's leading that. Good morning. Good morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
spices with shouts of joy to make melody in the Lord, we just thank you right now. Lord, we ask you to bless our pastor. Lord, we thank you for his teaching. We thank you, dear Father, for his leadership. So, Lord, we just thank you for our officers and members on this day. So, we ask you go with us, dear Father. Go with the sick all over the world. Lord, touch churches everywhere. Go in the hearts and minds of men everywhere. Lord, we just thank you. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor. For this is our prayer. For Christ's sake. Amen.
Good morning. I got to go to Color Purple last night, so I don't know if y'all saw it, but it was amazing. Um, I truly enjoyed DDS Sophia, so I hope you all get to catch it tonight if you haven't already. Uh, so I did quite a bit of yelling and singing last night. Um, all right, so we have the NAACP Souls to the Pole. That'll be today. Um, today at 12 p.m. So the, they'll be meeting at St. Stephen AME, 501 Red Cross Street, followed by lunch at First Missionary Baptist Church parking lot at 520 North Fifth Avenue. We have Children's Church Workers Orientation. That'll be held Wednesday, November 1st, 8 p.m. via Zoom. We have the Youth Photo Voice Project. So this project equips youth with tools that empower them to creatively engage with their community as agents for positive change. This is for middle and high school age students. They'll receive photography lessons and cameras to capture photos of images within their community that to them represent hope and inspiration. So this is an incredible opportunity for our children to engage in. Um, the dates for that will be Saturdays, which are November 4th, 11th, and 18th at Warner Temple from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So I strongly encourage our youth to come out and join that project. Daylight Savings Time ends Sunday, November 5th. And then we have Election Day, which is Tuesday, November 7th. Uh, remember that your vote is your voice. Wilmington District lineup meeting will be held Saturday, November 11th at 10 a.m. at St. Andrew AME Church, 1201 South 9th Street here in Wilmington. And November 12th is going to be a really big day for celebration. So not only is November 12th my birthday, and it's the birthday of another organization I do respect and love, um, but it is also our Pastor's Appreciation Day. So that'll be held uh, Sunday, November 12th at 9.30 a.m. So we look forward to seeing you all here on that Sunday. I may not, but I'll be with y'all in spirit. <laughs> we have the PFAS Gen X Exposure Study. Uh, this will be held at Warner um, on Friday, November 17th. It opens from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m and then the next day on Saturday, November 18th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. This will also be held at the Navassa Community Center as well at 338 Main Street in Navassa. That will be on Sunday, November 19th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that concludes the announcements. Thank you. Good morning. We greet all of you in the mighty matchless in marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Anybody glad to be alive? I mean, for real, just glad to be alive. And <clears throat> I was just thinking a moment ago just about um, what happened in Maine this week. You know, um, 18 people lost their lives. Um, and, they're, they're, you know, that family's situation will never, will never change. You know, we'll always remember those days. So, you know, we thank God for his protection. Anybody want to thank him for his protection right now? And just how he's watched over our children and our children's children. And, you know, and we, we go, come and go as we please, and yet we don't really think about the, what could happen. And yet God is such an awesome God that he allows us to be here. So we're glad that you all are here. Thank you for your presence. Um, let me just share a couple of announcements real quick. Number one, first of all, today is um, Souls to the Pole. If you have not already voted, if you have not already voted, we encourage you to go with us um, at 12 o'clock. We'll meet at St. Stephen's, and then we'll ride down to Red Cross, Second and Red Cross, where we'll um, cast our vote, cast your ballot. You're, you're electing um, city officials, um, persons who um, take care of roads, streets, uh, police, fire, um, and there are three positions open. 
So there's seven candidates running, and we encourage you to cast your vote. The mayor's running on a poll. So um, that's all that's on the ballot this, this time, this time around, is the city council slot. Um, and as Sharon mentioned just a moment ago, um, your vote is your voice, okay? Your vote is your voice. So I encourage you to be a part of that. Also, I um, want to remind us of the children's church workers orientation. Children's church workers. We've got a lot of kids, and we want to make sure that we do the best we can to equip them for the kingdom, that we prepare them for the kingdom of God. And so we're asking you, those who want to help us with our children's church, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get two or three people to work together as a team so that you will only have to be back there one time a month. You got me? One time a month. So if you're interested in being a part of the children's church team, please call the number at the le right left-hand corner of, yeah, left-hand corner of the calendar. Okay, that's the number you want to call. The number right there, the left-hand corner of the calendar. We're going to do that at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. What you mean? Yeah, give some God some praise on that. That's, that's huge. That is huge. When we meet on Wednesday, when we meet on Wednesday, we'll have lesson plans that we'll be able to give you. We're going to, as a matter of fact, you give me your name before you leave today, and we'll send the lesson plans to you. So you'll have the lesson plans, and you'll be able to pick the Sunday that you want to work, and you can pick the people that you want to work with, and you'll be prepared because what we really want to do, listen, gosh, man, it's so important that we prepare our children for the world. And we do that by getting them to know Christ in a personal and a very important way, okay? So we, we encourage you to be a part of that. If you're interested, please make sure that you see me. And some of you, I will see you, okay? I will see you before you leave today. And I will put my hand on you and my godly voice and say, Children's Church, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, okay? So don't try to duck me because I know who you is, okay? But we're really excited about that. And, and what I think makes it really work is that if we, if we have enough people doing it, and we will have enough people doing it, that you'll only have to sacrifice one Sunday a month, and that way um, we'll be able to bless our children. Now, last thing I want to just talk for a minute about is um, Friday and Saturday, the youth, and first of all, parents will be talking about the voice activity, the photo activity, a youth photo activity. We partner with the... Um, drug coalition program. And have you ever noticed that, that I try to get us to get involved in a lot of stuff? Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that? And, and this, this opportunity, watch, this opportunity will allow kids middle to high school to get a camera and they'll go around and they'll take pictures of, of activities of hope in their community. You know, not bad things that are happening, but how we can become advocates, how we can speak up on behalf of our community, and they'll, through the camera, be able to take a picture of what they call hope in their community, and then how we'll be able to explain it and talk about it. So it's a series of things. I'm excited about that, and if I had a middle school or a high school student, I would make sure that they're there. The workshop for the parent information is going to be Friday at 6.15 here at the church, and then the first session will be sun Saturday at the church at 11.30. All right. Um, uh, do I need to say anything about the 12th? Is that there's something happening on the 12th? Okay, Ms., Ms., you want to just hold up, Ms. Cut, Ms. Um, I, I'm just come down and do this because it's an important announcement. This is an important announcement. And as I come down, kids who are under 18, come quick, come quick. Kids who are under 18, in the in the vestibule, there are these nice pastor appreciation envelopes. Anybody want to run and get one now? Kenyatta, come get one. Come get one, Kenyatta, because you owe me big time. Yeah, come get one right now, Kenyatta. Uh, yeah. And, and matter of fact, and Kenyatta's going to have them in the back. Stand right here. Look at Kenyatta right here. She volunteered. See how she volunteered like that? Way to go, Kenyatta. She's going to have them in the back and make sure, Kenyatta, you get everybody one. Now, give Henry three. Oh, three? Yeah, give him three. All right. All right. All right. Give, him, give, him, give him three. Give him three. Give him three. All right. Ow, 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 ow. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, excuse me, good morning. Good morning, good morning. 
senior. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. Whoa, whoa, let's do it again. Wait, wait. You probably thought I was talking to the wall. Good morning. How are you guys? You good? You really? Okay. Um, yesterday, yesterday, I had a chance to hear a guy named Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is a football player. Um, he's gonna probably going to make the, the Hall of Fame and all that kind of stuff. But he said these two things. He says, one of the things I learned about, he says, he says he learned that hard work pays off. Hard work pays off. Hard work pays off. Um, got two people that are going to be doing something really special coming up soon. First of all, DJ has made the first cut for the um, middle school basketball team. He's made the first cut. He made the first cut. All right. Stand up, DJ, so they can see who you is. He made the, and he really thinks he can take me at basketball. He really thinks that. He believes it. So the second cut, the second, the second opportunity is this week, right? He tries out to get, so he's a seventh grader. Now he's going to be going against the eighth graders. So, so watch, so watch. So I, I would say, wow, let's pray for DJ that he does well. But then even if we pray for him that he does well, it doesn't help just to pray if you don't do the hard work. You got me? It doesn't just, just pray doesn't work. You got you to gotta put faith with your works, okay? And then the second person, um, that's enough, DJ, get away, get back, get back, back up, back up, that's enough. All right, the second person is Nina. Stand, stand here right here. Oh, watch this, okay. Now watch this. This little girl is going to be in a play at the Hannah Block Theater starting December the 17th. And her character's name is Alice. Alice, what's her last name? Wendokin. Alice Wendokin. And she, had, she showed me part of the script. I mean, she got a lot of, a lot of, but now watch, watch. She won't be good at that, playing Alice Wendokin, if she doesn't put in the time. You got me? So we're going to be coming to see you probably on November the 17th, okay? Isn't that exciting? Yes. Tickets are on sale now. As a matter of fact, I looked them up. The group rate is $16.00. And like 10 cents. So if you're interested in going to see her, I'm planning to try to go on November the 15th. That's 17th. That's the opening night. Right? Okay? If not, but if you're interested, let me know. Let me know because we want to support them. Now, the last thing, watch, is if you do the work, it'll pay off. I'm telling you, it doesn't just happen just because you pray. It happens when you work with your prayers. So the bottom line is you put feet to your prayers. So to make a basketball team, you got to practice. To be Alice Wendelton, you got to practice. To do well in school, yep, you got to practice. To do well as a senior, you got to practice, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for our kids who do great things. Because he's so often, you hear all the negative stuff. Well, they doing this and they doing that, blah, blah, blah. But God, thank you for for the kids that do the right thing. And we pray, God, that you'll help them to watch us as we, too, put in the time to do great things for you. Bless them and keep them in your care. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Help me, help me. Sir. Now, listen, I tell you all the time, if you're doing anything, if you're doing anything, anything, let me know because we want to come and see you. We want to be, I want to be there to cheer you on. I want to be there to go, yeah. And don't we all want to be there to cheer them on? Don't we really do? We really do. We really want to cheer you on, okay? So whatever you're doing, please let us know, okay? Help me sing. One, two, ready, go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are we.
All right. Okay. Um, one additional announcement. We will be, we'll be selling um, bait, um, refreshments, refreshments in the, in the fellowship hall for Michaela. Michaela's our senior, and um, we're excited there for scholarship. So if you're interested, make sure you stop by. I did that last week, man, and I got one of those peach cobbler things, <laughs> and I called because it ran out. I didn't understand how it just, just all of a sudden didn't fill itself back up. But please um, help us with that. Today is Lay Sunday, and we'll, the district will be hosting a lay uh, council service today at 3 o'clock at St. Paul's. And every fifth Sunday, um, we'll invite or I will invite a lay person to speak um, on the fifth Sunday. Um, today's lay person um, that I've invited to speak, I met back in um, 2017. I was coming to the church to what I normally do every day, and as I pulled up to the church, there was this guy in a car, and um, he was sitting in the car, and he didn't look like me, but he was sitting in the car, and I, I thought really it was a drug deal going bad. I really did, straight talk. I mean, I thought, well, what's this guy doing in my neighborhood? What's he doing here? And so I went to the car, and I asked him, I said, hey, you know, what are you doing here? And he says, well... I play this game called Pokemon or something where they find Pokemons in the air. And he says, this is a good spot to pick them up. I said, well, hey, well, come on in the house. Let me introduce you to the real Pokemon. So I invited him into the church, and we sat down and we talked. And I showed him all the stuff around and everything. And eventually we started talking, and it was shortly after I had announced I was going to run for city council. And he said, well, you know, I've been wanting to help somebody in a political thing, and I went, I went to the NW, I went to the Democratic Party, and they never got back to me and stuff. And I said, "Well, you can help me." And so, that guy's been a really close friend of mine. And the speaker this morning, following the selection from the choir, will be a guy named James Dempsey. All right. All right. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm excited at how um, God has blessed his life, and he's blessed ours, and how he has just been a blessing to Warner Temple, and he really has. He's just been a, a blessing to Warner. So following the selection from the choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of uh, Mr. James Dempsey, our layperson speaker. Now, he's dressed a little differently today, okay, but we're just honored that he's come to be a part of us. All right, choir sing, then the next voice you'll hear will be that of from James. Victory belongs to you. 
It is a lot easier to be the next voice you hear when you're not also running the sound port. So, <laughs> I have to excuse me for one moment while I make my way up here. And Reverend Barnett, I have to say, you told about half of my story this morning. So. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's different being up here with an audience. I've, uh, I've stood up here and tested mics quite a few times, so this is a very uh, much more intimidating experience. <laughs> um, Reverend Barnett did ask me, or did tell me a while back that he was going to ask me to do this at some, at some point in time, so I can't say this is entirely a surprise. Um, but uh, in all honesty, when he asked this week, I kind of hesitated because it's been kind of a rough couple of weeks for me. It's been a rough, uh, a rough few months, honestly. Um, had a lot going on in my life, had some issues with a pet, had some family stuff, friend stuff, um, job stuff, and uh, you know, just life stuff. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think that this was the best time for me to do something like this. And the more I thought about it, and then after I talked to Reverend Barnett, the more I realized that uh, there is no best time to do something like this. So I'm going to do the only thing that I can do whenever something happens that I don't know if I'm ready for it. I'm going to do the best I can. <laughs> and I want, I want to address two questions that have come up a lot uh, since I started coming to Warner Temple more than six years ago. The, for, the, the first question is, why do you go to War Warner Temple? <laughs> and that may not be word for word exactly the question that's always asked, um, but, uh, but it's a general idea. And not every time, but a decent number of times, there's a special emphasis placed on you. Why do you go there? Why do you go to Warner Temple AME Zion Church? That question comes up more than you might think. Um, I think the hat might be partly to blame for that. Um, <laughs> I've been asked that question by Lyft and Uber drivers. Uh, why do you go to Warner Temple? I've been asked that question uh, at community yeah. events and political rallies and, and, and just various things around town. I've, I've sat at Hughes Brothers waiting for a tire to be patched and been asked, why do you go to Warner Temple? And it's never, it's never a, a confrontational question. It's, general, it's a genuine curiosity. I did not know how to respond at first um, because the answer seemed too simple to me. Uh, when people ask a question like that, they're expecting a complicated answer. They're expecting something complex or maybe something unusual. And my answer is neither. Uh, why do I go to Warner Temple? Because I was invited. Uh, Reverend Barnett shared the story initially where, where I was invited in. Um, there's a bit more to it than that. There's some exercise involved, not just Pokemon Go. That was the point, was to, to get out and, 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 and have a reason to be out exercising while Patty was in class. Um, after I was invited in and I'd been working with Reverend Barnett and Ms. Cahem uh, on a few things around the church and with Reverend Barnett uh, on, on a few things related to his political uh, campaign, everyone that I ran into kept inviting me to the Sunday services. And I felt like that as much as I was here, I needed to know this place better. It was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I grew up in a family that occasionally went to church. My grandmother tried to get us to go to church all the time, but she didn't go either, so. Uh, <laughs> I had attended churches with friends from school. Uh, I had worked on uh, t uh, events doing technical theater and uh, um, uh, support for several different churches um, around the Triangle area. Um, they were mostly kind of stoic and somber churches. Um, they didn't seem particularly inviting. Everybody there already seemed to know each other, and they didn't seem interested in meeting anybody new. Uh, I had never been to a church like Warner. Uh, so Patty and I missed, uh, uh, so Patty and I attended a few services, 
uh, a couple of services, I think, over two consecutive Sundays. And we're blown away by the energy and the music and the, just the absolute, the, the environment, how welcome we felt, uh, the number of people who came up and invited uh, and, and introduced themselves to us. Um, and then one day, the next Sunday, the third Sunday in a row, we, we missed the service. We didn't go to the service. But I don't think we had a really a reason. We had gone a couple of times and got to know you all, and we didn't go. And then the next Sunday, we came back again. And as we walked into the sanctuary, Gail pulled me aside and said the second question that I want to address, which is, why weren't you here last Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> and that was not a question I expected to have to answer either. And like I said, we didn't really have a very good answer. So the next Sunday, we came back. And six years later, we're, we're, we're still here. And, and there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of complicated you know, uh, aspects to, to why people do things. But at its core, at, at its most basic, we're here because we were invited to be here. And this is the only place that we've ever felt welcome in the way that we feel welcome here. <laughs> so thank you for in inviting us here. And thank you for asking us why we didn't come back. And I do want to say also that that invitation has absolutely changed my life. And I will forever be grateful for the absolute privilege that it is to be a part of this church family. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Wow. It really belongs to you. It really belongs. Yes, sir. Can we give God some praise for the message? And we praise God for the messenger. Two good questions. Why did you go to water? And why were you not here? Wow. Um, and then he made that crazy statement that messed me up. He says, and it's changed my life. Anybody's life been changed? Ah, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And that's that's why, that's why we come. That's why we come. And, and we pray to God that, God, you make us the church that um, makes people welcome. Man. Coming with all your issues, with all your stuff, with all the things that go wrong in your life. Coming with, with all the, everything that happens your way. Everything that comes into that life throws. Because he said, you know, life. I'm life happens. Life Life is tough. Life is life. And, and even with all those issues, you still come. Because this is a hospital. This is a place where God wants to do things for us and mold us and make us. And so how do you get people to come? You invite them. You invite them. It's, I said in the very beginning, remember I said? Sheep bring sheep. Right. Well, that's all to do more to get people there. No, no. How you live at home, how you live on your job, how you're inviting people, how you're encouraging them to become a part of our church. We'd love for you to do that. We also want to just make sure that you have a right relationship with God. Because it starts with your personal relationship. And if you're not there, today's a great day to do that. Amen. If
you're here and you want to become a part of our church, today's a great day to do that. Man, wow. Got some special prayer requests. You let us know. We'd love to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. Please um, remember we received a note that uh, Sandy um, Santiago lost a brother today. And so last night, so we want to remember her in our prayers as well as... Um, Yeah, Mr. Willie Nixon's mother-in-law, his mother is in the hospital, so we pray for her. And um, someone else lost, oh, Mr. Cleve. Mr. Cleve Herring lost a relative today as well. So we want to remember, sisters, remember them in our prayers. Okay, um, would you do me a favor? Would you stand, and we're going to pray. And as we pray, I, I want you to join hands with the people around you. Would you stand, stand, everybody please stand. And join hands with the people around you. And kind of like whisper to them, boy, I'm glad you're here at Warner. I'm glad you're here at Warner. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here at Warner. I'm glad you're here at Warner. Mm. I'm glad God allowed our paths to cross. Wow. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Mama used to say, the Lord works in a mysterious way. Mm. You, you do things kind of ah, kind of backwards sometimes, God. Kind of, you know, you, you, you just do things the way you do it. And, and, and God, I love you because the way you do it, it always works out. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for allowing us to hold the hand that we're holding right now. And God, maybe if I squeeze just a little bit, just to remind them, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm glad, uh, in spite of all that you may have had to go through, in spite of all the stuff that you hear about churches and all that kind of stuff, God, I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad we're here to work out the kingdom of God together. Mm. So I pray for you. And would you just pray for me? Because that's the what God's people do. God, we thank you for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. God, we thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. And then, God, we pray for that second question that James asked, where, why weren't you here? We pray for those who are absent, those who, who thought about getting here but didn't get here. God, we pray that you'll bring them back in. Turn them around, God, before it's everlasting too late. We lift up those who've lost loved ones. We lift up those who have surgeries or doctor's appointments this week. We pray for those who are in hospitals right now. God, we pray for our children. Hold them in the palm of your hand. We also, God, pray for the, our brothers and sisters in Maine. God, in the world that has been troubled with um, the stuff that's happening in Israel and the Gaza Bank. God, we pray for wars across the world. God, we ask for your mercy and your grace. God, we pray that you will help us to be the light that you've called us to be. God, we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you will do. And we give you all the praise. As a matter of fact, God, I'm going to stop right here and just praise you for a moment. I'm going to say thank you to you, God. Not to nobody else, but thank you to you, God. Thank you to you, God, because there's nobody but you. Thank you to you, God, who brought us through. Thank you to you, God, who made ways. Thank you to you, God, who keeps providing for us. Thank you to you, God, who gives us strength to go on. We give you the praise and we give you the honor. For we ask all these things in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you give God some praise? Just before we have our benediction, Sandra Bell wants to just say a, something. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm, I'm holding her by the neck. Please do. Okay, so. Okay, good morning, church. Good morning. I would like to just take this time out to say thank you to my church 
and to class number five for a beautiful birthday gift that y'all have given me. I truly, truly appreciate it. Amen. She, we were at an event yesterday. We were at the wedding yesterday, and she tapped me, and she said, Pastor Monday, can I say something at church tomorrow? And then I started praying. <laughs> and I said, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? And she says, I just want to thank my class for my birthday gift. And so I, you're welcome, and thank you. Um, it's good to say thank you. It really is. And it's good to be in a place where you feel love. And listen, and, and it has to happen, watch this, it has to happen not just from the pulpit. You got to have folks in your congregation like Gail who says, where were you last week? You got me? Because what, 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 listen, let me, let me, can I just talk for a minute? Listen, wow. What, what, what gets people to join the church and get them to follow you in the church is how you treat them. It's how you treat them. Man, and when, when, when they're not here, you miss them. And when they're not here, you talk to them. And you don't just, like, I got to go out this door and I got to go out that door. You spend time talking to folks and learning to love them and getting to know their names. And do crazy things like show up at their basketball game. Show up at their play. The best Christmas ever. You know, just, just do crazy stuff. And then you let your light shine. So that those who know us but don't know him will want to know him because they bumped into us, because they ran into us, because they saw us in the grocery line, because they met us in the street doing Pokemon junk, because they bumped into you. And that's what the word says, so you let your light shine so that men might see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So you modeled it. You modeled it. You modeled it. So as we end this day of worship, really like we began, remember? We put light into the sanctuary. It's a symbol. It's a symbol. It represents Jesus coming in human form. We bow to the cross in reference to the Savior who gave his life for us on it. The candle on the right represents Jesus who came as a baby boy born in a Bethlehem in a manger. The candle on the left represents Jesus who came as the only begotten Son of God. And notice as Alice extinguishes the candle. <laughs> she lights her candle lighter because the symbol says God I don't want to just leave you here. I don't, I don't want to leave you. Man, the world will go to hell in, in a handbasket if we left him in this room. So let him show up in our lives. Let him show up where we are. Let him show up where you are. That a light might shine, that men might see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Having now entered the worship, depart and serve. God bless you. <laughs>